In this video, we will talk about the atrioventricular canal defect, also known as the AV canal defect. Normally, the heart has four chambers, with the right and the left atria at the top, and the right and the left ventricles down below. The right and the left atrium are separated from each other by the atrial septum, and the right and the left ventricles are separated from each other by the ventricular septum. The opening between the right atrium and the right ventricle is guarded by the tricuspid valve, and the opening between the left atrium and the left ventricle is guarded by the bicuspid valve. The, the functions of these valves is to ensure that blood flows in only one direction and there is no backflow of the blood. So this was the basic overview of the normal heart. The AV canal defect is a congenital heart disease, means the disease is present right from the birth and there is incomplete fusion of the endocardial cushions leading to the AV canal defect. The endocardial cushions are a subset of cells found in the developing heart tube that will give rise to the heart's primitive valves and septa. This is critical to the proper formation of a four-chambered heart. The AV canal defect is characterized by a high ventricular septal defect which is continuous with a low atrial septal defect and there are also clefts of bicuspid and tricuspid valves. All this leads to the formation of a large central AV valve that allows blood to flow between all the four chambers of heart. The cause in most of the congenital heart disease is unknown. The factors that increase the risk of AV canal defect include the Down syndrome. It is the most common cardiac defect in children with Down syndrome. Other risk factors include drinking alcohol during pregnancy, family history of congenital heart defects, particularly among the parents, smoking during pregnancy, and poorly controlled diabetes during pregnancy. Now the pathophysiology. The alterations in the hemodynamics depend on the severity of the defect and the child's pulmonary vascular resistance. Immediately after birth, while the newborn's pulmonary vascular resistance is higher than the systemic resistance, there is minimum shunting of blood through the defect. When this resistance falls, left to right shunting of the blood occurs and there is increased pulmonary blood flow, leading to the pulmonary vascular engorgement. This ultimately leads to the heart failure. The clinical manifestations include a loud systolic murmur, mild cyanosis, difficulty breathing or rapid breathing, wheezing, lack of appetite, and poor weight gain. For diagnosis of the AV canal defect, we can listen to the systolic heart murmur. It is typically noted in the first one or two weeks of life. This heart murmur is often the first clue that the AV canal defect exists. Ultrasound can detect the AV canal defect in baby before birth. The ECG reveals abnormal heart activity. The echocardiogram can reveal a hole in the heart, abnormal heart valves, and abnormal blood flow through the heart. Cardiac catheterization gives very detailed information about the structures inside the heart. In this test, a small thin flexible tube called the catheter is put into a blood vessel in the child's groin. Then the healthcare provider guides it to the child's heart. The doctor will inject the child with contrast dye to see his heart more clearly. The chest x-ray reveals the heart failure. The definitive treatment in the AV canal defect is the surgery. The first surgical intervention is the palliative surgery, including pulmonary artery banding. This reduces the severity of the signs and symptoms. In this, a band is placed over the main pulmonary artery and fixed. It is then tightened to reduce the diameter of the main pulmonary artery, which reduces the pulmonary blood flow and provides symptomatic relief. Complete repair is performed by surgical patch closure of the septal defects to close the ESD and the VSD and reconstruction of the atrioventricular valve tissue to create the two separate valves, the bicuspid valve and the tricuspid valve. The nursing management focuses on monitoring the heart rate and rhythm of the patient, providing adequate rest periods to conserve the energy of the baby, providing preoperative care and educating the patients about the surgical procedure and what to expect and uh, this in also includes completing all the assessment and investigations. Providing post-operative care including monitoring the vital signs, providing pain management, positioning the child, assessing the cardiovascular and the pulmonary systems and so on, and monitoring the child for emergence of any complications. Finally, we need to administer the medications to the child as prescribed by the pediatrician. Thank you, that was all about the AV canal defect.